What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial and today I can show you how to make your first Unreal Engine 5 game. Basically at the end of the video you will have your first game with different features and mechanics as different moving platforms, a shotgun to shoot and different AI enemies and all it's gonna be a very easy video to follow so let's get started. But first, check out the link in the description to get our some Unreal Engine courses on WinFox. Alright, so the first thing that we have to do is go ahead and open Unreal Engine. Now, in this video, I'm going to be using Unreal Engine 5.1, but of course, you can use whatever version of Unreal Engine 5 you want, such as 0.03 and 0.02, etc. But I recommend using the latest one, 5.1. But it is as your choice. So, we're going to go ahead and select games. I'm going to select the third person template. It's going to be Blueprint, and you can leave everything as default. Now I would recommend enabling started content so I have some more materials and stuff to work with. And then we can just choose a location and then a private name. And then we can just hit create. Okay, so once it's open, you will find out this. We have the default third person template map opened. We have different windows here, different user interfaces, etc. So this main window will be basically a viewport and here you can just move around the scene and the 3D environments and basically select objects, uh, move them around with these gizmos and uh, widgets and also place new things, etc. Then we have the details panel, which you will have basically the different parameters and options in the different objects that you select in the scene. Then we have the outliner or hierarchy, which is basically just a list of all the uh, actors and objects also in the scene and the map. Then you have the world settings, basically parameters, and it's like a details panel, but for the level itself. And then just world partition, we're not going to be using that today. Then you have the content browser, which is basically where you can find all of the assets, folders, etc. in your project. So, with all that said, let's start by actually getting some animations. Now, the thing is that right now, if I press play, we will have a character, now it's compiling some materials, there we go. So we can just move around, jump, etc. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to add a shotgun into a game because we want to shoot the enemies. So we want to get some shotgun animations to basically shoot, etc. So we're going to be using this free Unreal Engine asset, which is available on the marketplace, which you can just download. I will be linking it in the description. It's totally free. You can just add it into your library. And then we're going to just open um, basically Epic Games Launcher. We're going to go into the uh, library and then down on here, you can search for your asset and we'll basically just press add to private. So now you can basically go ahead and search all your price. So in my case, it will be the uh, first game tutorial. Now it will not show up because I'm using the new version 5.1. So we have to just say um, show all of the products and then you will see this there. Now it will say it's not compatible, but if it is compatible with 5.0, it's the same. It, won't, it doesn't matter basically. So you can just say 5.0 selected and now you will be able to go ahead and add it to the pride. Like I said, it doesn't matter. There's no really change in this asset depending if you're in 5.0 or 5.1. So we can just go ahead and add it into your pride. There we go. So once it has uh, basically imported, you will see a new folder with all of the animations. Now, the thing is that we have to select the ones that we want and basically retard them to use the new Unreal Engine mannequin. As you can see, this is using the old Unreal Engine 4 mannequin and we want the new Unreal Engine 5 mannequin. Now, this process is very easy, just a few clicks. So, let's first find our animations that we want. So, let's start with the EL Idol animation. So, the ones that we are just basically, you know, not moving. So, I'm going to be using the Idol Rifle hick, uh, Hip. Sorry. So, what you want to do it is selected, right click, and then we will have a lot of different options about this asset. So we're going to go here into retarget and then duplicate and retarget. So now we're going to choose an asset. It's going to be from UE4 Manny to UE5 Manny. So now it will basically convert this um, skeleton to use the new Unreal Engine mannequin. So we can just say retarget and there we go. Now we have it in our new uh, mannequin and it will basically work as it is. And open it here you will see it looks absolutely amazing so i'm gonna go ahead and create a new folder with shotgun animations so we can basically have them all in a place so i'm just gonna go ahead and drag it move it here and now we want to get other animations such as the jog so we're gonna go ahead and get the 
um, this one, the jug forward rifle. So we can do the same. Just right click, go and retarget this. Go ahead and select the UE4 to UE5 Manny, and then just retarget it, and then go ahead and still move it and to the shotgun animations. And then we'll do it once more for the actual shoot. So we have also have you know like sprinting or crouch. So in the future, you want to add more things and animations, you can very easily with this asset basically. Um, but let's go ahead and find the actual shoot animation. So just uh, search for shot and then you will say that we have the fire. So we're gonna be using basically this animation over here. There we go. So it's the fire shotgun iron sight. So I use right click and do the same retarget, duplicate retarget. We're gonna go ahead and search the UE4 to UE5 and then just click retarget and there we go. Just drag it into shotgun animations. Right. So now how can we implement and use these animations on our current character? Okay, so we what we want to do is go ahead and right click go into animation and now we're gonna go ahead and create a new um, blend space now there's an easier blend space and a more simple one under the legacy if you're in 5.1 if not it will be just in here but if you need 5.1 you just go in the legacy and then we'll see blend space 1d now let me explain what is a blend space in a second so let's go ahead and select this button it will be the new unreal engine 5 mannequin and then we can stage this here into um well basically shotgun um blend space 1d so we can just go ahead and open this so basically a blend space will basically allow us to um, smoothly transition from different animations depending on a value which in our case will be the speed so in our case the 1d will just only be in one axis in one direction which only will be the speed so we can just go into here into axis settings and this is going to be our speed and then our maximum speed will be our maximum uh, character speed so in my case, it will be 500 because in the, if we go into third person, sorry, here not, third person blueprints, third person character blueprint, you will see if we select the character movement component and go into max uh, speed, max walk speed is actually 500. So we basically have to match this. Now we can just close it for now, but yeah, you can just put whatever maximum speed you want your character to have accordingly to the blueprint. So now in here, we can just search for idle in the asset browser. If you don't see it, you can just go into windows and then it will be here as a browser. So we want to get the idle uh, rifle hit. So it will be just drag it and then all to the left. And then we want to get the jug with the rifle and just drag it and then it will be all to the right. So now if I hold control and uh, go ahead and go through the timeline or the axis, you can see as the speed will increase, it will transition from an idle animation so with no speed into actually jog so that's really cool we can go ahead and close this and now we want to just go back into our folder and then right click go into animation and create an animation blueprint so we're gonna again select our skeleton and create and then what we're going to do is select this so it's gonna be our well yeah we're gonna rename it completely it's gonna be a um abp shotgun shotgun Okay, so let's go ahead and open this up and you will see that we have a graph. Basically, it looks a lot like normal blueprints, but instead of doing like actual uh, code functions, uh, it's just depending, it's just moving animation stuff, it makes sense. So we just want to find our blend space again in the asset browser. So it's going to be our shotgun uh, blend space 1D. So just drag it. Now we're going to add one more thing. Now we should just basically connect this to over here but the thing is that later on we want to play our fire animation right so the thing is that we're gonna play this animation directly from the code from our blueprint so this is will be called an animation montage so to be able to play animation montages we have to add a specific slot on our animation blueprint now it might not make a lot of sense now later on when we actually implement it it will probably make more sense but basically just search for default and just add this slot. So basically this will allow to play animations from the code from blueprints later on at any time that we want in the gameplay. Anyway, now we have to go ahead and control the speed. Now if we go ahead and compile, you will see that the character will be just standing in the idle animation. Now the thing is that if we change the speed parameter into let's say the 500 and then compile again, you will see that now he'll be playing the jog animation. So in conclusion, we have to basically change the speed animation 
uh, dynamically depending on our current player speed in the game. So we can go ahead and right click promote it to available and we can go into the bank graph. So this is the most similar thing to a blueprint. So what we want to do is just call the initialize uh, blue, uh, event blueprint initialize animation. This is like the begin play. When it starts the game, it will do this. So we're going to go up here and get the try get pound honor. So what I want to do is basically cast to our third person character. Basically, we're accessing our player. So from this, what we want to do is get the character movement component. If we go down, we can see it in here. So in here, we'll basically get more options as the speed, the maximum uh, walk, uh, things like a lot of things, basically the acceleration. So what I want to do is get the velocity over here and just go down and there we go. So the problem is that this will be a vector uh, parameter and our speed is a float. So what we can do is call this handy node, which is just a vector length node. And it will basically convert this vector into a simple float. So we can just drag our speed and then set it. Now, the thing is that if we do it like this and then just pop it over here, it will just do it once in the begin play. So at the start. So let's run. If we move our player, it will not update it because it just did it once when the game started. So we want to do it all the time. So we can use the update. So the thing is that we can use um, basic alt and then click in here to break the note and then do the same over here. And I'm going to get these three notes. Well, this bunch of notes and just put them on here. I'm going to go ahead and connect them. Now, the things that we did this on here to get our player, because basically casting is um, pretty heavy in performance. We just want to do it when we need to. And it's on the start one time and that's it. So now we can just go ahead and promote to variable and save our character. So we are just going ahead and accessing our character one time in the beginning play. And then we are just going to go ahead and get the character and then update its um, speed um, in the update, but not accessing again because it will uh, basically affect our performance. So now what we have to do is just go into a third person map content, third person blueprints and open our third person character blueprint. So basically what we just access in this character moment component earlier. Now what we want to do is go into the viewport and select our uh, character mesh. So now in here we can change its name class from using the default one into our um, shotgun. And now you see that it has a shotgun. So now if I compile and go ahead and press play, you will see that now we have our shotgun and it will alter the animation depending on the character speed. Very cool. So let's go ahead and just add a simple model of a shotgun into our game. So to do this, I'm going to be leaving the link in the description to this uh, handy place, but we're going to be using Sketchfab. So basically, we're going to be using this shotgun over here. It's totally free from Sketchfab. So I will be linking this in the description. This is, so what you want to do is go ahead and click on the load 3D model and then download it as an FBX. OK, so now that we have our shotgun uh, downloaded, what you want to do is go ahead and right click. I'm going to go ahead and extract it. And then we'll have this folder and in source, you will see that we have the model itself. And then in textures, we have all the materials. So basically, we just want to go back here and just drag this shotgun folder into our content browser. So you can just, for example, just plug it in into content. Now this will, uh, this pop-up will basically just pop up there basically. So I was going to go ahead and reset it to default and then we go. So this is just the import parameters. You can change things over here as importing it as in skeleton mesh, changes rotation, etc. If you want to import basically animations, uh, how you want to create new material, etc. Just go ahead and click reset to default and just say import all. We are not interested on basically changing things. Now, the thing is that they imported it in different pieces and it's actually not what we want. So we're going to actually go back into content, uh, get a folder and just delete it. Just delete. Yeah. And then we're going to go ahead and put it again. So we're going to go into the mesh advanced and here we're going to say combine meshes. Sorry about that. So now we can just say import all. That's the only thing that we want. And now we have just the shotgun. So now I'm going to get the shotgun and just drag it into the parent on here. Move it. So it's a bit more organized. So now I can just delete the source and then I will just have textures and the shotgun. So now we need to apply the materials into the shotgun because you know that well, it, it doesn't have any uh, textures at all. So what we want to do 
is go ahead, go here into textures, and then we're going to go ahead and create a new material. This will be the M underscore shotgun. So now we can go ahead and open this guy up. So now in here, we can basically place all the textures and just plug them in in our output. So just press Ctrl space to open our content browser. And now we can go into shotgun textures and then just get all the textures and just drag them in to here. Now you see that there's a bunch of them. So actually we're gonna delete them and just put them one by one. So first of all, we have the base color. This we just plug in into the base color over here, the RGB. Then we want to get an M in occlusion. So our AO will just be in occlusion. Then our M will be our uh, metallic. We'll just plug it in metallic. And then normal, which is gonna add some bumps and stuff into the normal and then R, which is gonna be the roughness. We'll just go in here and then uh, that's it. We have all the nodes uh, perfectly added. So now we can just go ahead and apply into the material and then save the material. And now we can just close this, go back and we can just also close the character and etc. for now. And now we can just go back into our shotgun and then we can just apply the material into itself. And there we go. We can see that now we have all the textures into the material. Great. Another thing I want to do is just go ahead and rename this into shotgun because I don't know, I just added it for because I downloaded it in the past anyway. So now we want to add that shotgun into our character because right now it's just not holding anything. So what we want to just go in third person blueprints character. Now we're gonna go back into the viewport and what we want to do is go under the mesh and add a new static mesh. So this will be our shotgun basically. So now in here, what we're gonna do is just add a static mesh, which in our case, again, it will be our shotgun. And there we go. Now the thing is that we want to place it on the hands. But the thing is that if we were to go ahead and just rotate it and kind of uh, place it on here, uh, I don't know, I, I just done it very fast, but imagine if you were to place it a bit more correctly in the hands and then press play, you will see that it will not follow correctly the movement of the player. So what we have to do is basically create a new socket. So basically what we want to do is go into here, content, characters, mannequins, um, animations, sorry, uh, meshes, and then we're gonna open the SK mannequin skeleton. So this is just the skeleton with all of the bones. Now, what we want to do is find the hand that we want to snap it in. In our case, it will be the right hand. So what we want to do is find the hand R and then just right click and add a socket. So now it will just add this hand R socket. So in my case, I'm gonna change it for um, right hand underscore socket. Um, and then go bit, go and then shotgun. So shotgun, right hand, socket. Of course you can name whatever you want, it doesn't matter, but there we go. So now this our socket, what we're gonna use right click, add preview asset and find our shotgun, and there we go. So now we can basically move this um, to basically make it fit on our character's mesh. So now the key is just go ahead and start rotating it, moving it around. I'm gonna change this into be the local global space. And then you can just place. Now to match it be better, what you can do is just preview the animation. So in here, you can go preview animation, find the idle, and then it's gonna be the idle rifle hip. And then what you should do is just pause the animation down here. So now we can just edit it a bit easier. Now the pivot is just far away from the shotgun. It's just how the model was made in Sketchfab, but it doesn't matter really. We are just gonna go ahead and plug it in over here. There we go, so we want to kind of match how this goes go i'm gonna do it very fast but of course you can just do it a bit better with more attention to detail in order to you know make it look a bit better but you know go kind of like this i think will be pretty good and perfect if you want to copy exactly my transformer rotation you can just do here you can just plug in those values into your socket too so now what we can do is just press save, close it. And now in our shotgun, what we're going to do is just reset the location and rotation. So now we'll be back in here. And in parent socket, because it's child of mesh, make sure it's a child of mesh. You just go ahead and find our shotgun right hand socket. And now it will be stuck in there. So now if we press play, there we go. It will be following the animation stuff. 
there we go so now what we want to do is also so go back and um, we'll go into the collision presets and say no collision sorry no collision there we go because we don't want to be affecting other things if you say visual thing for a character we don't want it to have any collision with other things just in case we bug things up okay so now we have a cool player which holds a shotgun can moves around with this animation so let's quickly make that it can shoot some simple projectiles we're gonna create a new blueprint sorry a new folder and it's gonna be called blueprints so this is just gonna contain all the blueprints that we're gonna create from now on that we have basically some logic in so we're gonna go ahead and right click go into blueprint class i'm gonna create a new actor type blueprint basically it just can be placed or spawned in the world which is what we want for our bullet so we can just press actor and it's going to be our bp underscore um bullet so let's go ahead and open this up so now this window will pop up so now this is just similar to the third person character blueprint so what we're going to do just press add and then it's going to be just a simple sphere for now so this is going to be our bullet basically just rename it there we go so what we're going to do is just grab this and move it into the default scene root so now the parent it will be the mesh itself and then another thing that we want to do is just add a new component which will be the projectile movement so actually unreal engine has made it very easy for us which already has a projectile movement component so we just want to add an initial speed so for example 3000 and then a max speed of 3500 so it can like accelerate so it will look a bit better i'm gonna leave everything as default for now so we can just say compile and save and now we can just go ahead and go back in a third person character i'm gonna go into the van graph so now we want to create a logic so that it basically um actually spawns our bullet so we're gonna make it properly and let's add a new um input into our character so we want to go into the begin play and you will find this add mapping context we're just gonna find this now in here it will just contain the collections of all the inputs that it has right now it just have uh, has jump move and look so let's go into actions and right click go into input and we're gonna go ahead and create a new input action now i do have a more detailed tutorial about an input action system so i will be basically linking it in the description so this is going to be an ea shoot so now we don't have to do anything else with this because we just want to leave it as default. So now we can close it, but now we can go into our collection, which is basically all the collection of the inputs. We're going to add a new one and then it's going to be our shoot. Now, if you don't really understand what, what, just, what just happened, basically, don't worry. I have a more uh, advanced tutorial on this. Now we just go ahead and assign a key. So it's going to be basically the left mouse button. So you can just select this and then press the key you want or just find it in here. Now we can save and now because it was really adding the mapping context we can just go down over here right click and then say shoot and we'll find an ea shoot the first one the enhanced action uh, events not the second one the first one which is just have the arrow so now here what we want to do is an uh, triggered we want to spawn an actor from a class which in our case it will be the bullet so it's going to class search for bb bullet and then we can just assign a transform so in our case, what we're going to do is go into our shotgun and just press add. I'm going to find an arrow. So now this arrow can be basically placed in a position that we want to spawn the bullet. So in our case, it's going to be kind of here, um, just around the tip of the shotgun. Now to make things easier, I can just go here and disable real time. So now the animations will not be displaying. So I can just move a bit more correctly. I'm going to also disable the grid. So now it's a bit better. There you go. So we'll spawn basically in here, and we'll leave the X being forward. So we'll spawn like that. Now I can go ahead and enable back real time. So this is going to be renamed into um, bullet spawn pause. So now let's go back into the bin graph and just get the bullet spawn pause. I'm going to say get um, transform. transform. Now we do have a lot of different transforms. So we want to get the weld transform. So the transform will contain the location, the rotation, and the scale of the object. So what we want to do is just go into spawn transform, right click, and split it. And then we're going to do the same thing into the bullet. So we have each axis basically separate. 
So the location will go into the location, the rotation into rotation, but the scale, we want to make it a bit smaller because it will be actually huge. So for example, into 0 0.2, 0 0.2 and 0.2. And now in collision handling, what we're going to do is make it always spawn and ignore all the collisions. So now we compile and press play. You'll see that now we can shoot <laughs> our bullets. Now the things that are happening is that it's actually spawning a bullet while also I'm holding the trigger. So what I want to do is just hold control and then move it into started. So now it will only spawn a bullet once it has detected uh, the mouse click only, not while I'm holding it. So now you can see I can basically shoot bullets. Now I can make them faster if I go back into the break the movement component and make it, I don't know, 4,500 and then the maximum making it 5,000. Of course, you can play with the settings and make um, and stuff. Now, yeah, you can basically also change the um, scale of the of the of the bullet and stuff and also the material uh, and stuff now we'll do more things later on now i think what to do is basically make it so that the camera is a bit more to the right as you know in shooting games in third person normal ones you have the camera a bit into the shoulder so you can aim better so i'm gonna go into the third person character program now just quickly uh, hold ctrl shift s to basically save everything Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and also select all this, press C, so now we can command this, say, shoot um, system. For now, it's a very, uh, you know, simple one, but there we go. So now what we're going to do is go into the viewport. So we have to select the camera boom. Now, the thing is that the follow camera will be always attached to the camera boom if we are in a third person game. Because the camera boom is actually what will control the length, where it's on the player, and the rotation, etc. more things, basically. So what we want to do is go into socket offset and in the Y axis will be the right at a parameter. So for example, let's say 50. So now you'll see that the camera moves slightly into the right. Now, this is just testing and seeing what works best over you. So for me, I think it works pretty cool like that. And also I'm gonna make it so that the length is like 350. So it's a bit more closer to the player. So now there we go, it's a bit more closer and it's a bit more to the right. And there we go. So now I think I like a lot how it looks. So we can also shoot and stuff. There we go. So now we're ending with a pretty cool result as you can see. Now another thing that is happening is that the bullets just stuck on there. So what we're gonna do is go into the bullet, go into the vein graph, and we can just go into an event and add the uh, on collision, go up here, uh, event hit. So basically when it has collided with something, what I'm going to do is just destroy the actor itself. So it will destroy the bullet. Now I'm going to go ahead and delete all the other uh, events. We don't need them. So now if I press play, you will see that now when it collides with something, it will just destroy the actor itself, basically the bullet. Great. So now we have a really cool, um, you know, character movement, which holds a shotgun. We can shoot bullets, etc. It is all looking very good. So now our next step will be basically creating our platforms to be able to move around. Now for this, we can basically transform this you know, third person map to be how we want, or we can create a new one. So what we're going to do is go ahead up here, file, new level. I'm going to go ahead and create a new basic one. So we're going to say create, and there we go. We have a new empty level to basically work on. So we want to make it kind of a platform game and also shooting game. So uh, I'm just going to add something. So the first thing I'm going to do is go up here. So now here we can add all the things that we want. And basically we're going to just add some cubes. So now we can go down, go and now here and just place it over here. So I'm going to reset it to be in the 000. zero, zero. And then we'll basically start a bit up. So what we're going to do is just press R or just select it on here. And it's basically the scaling tool. So we can just make it as big as we want, change the length, etc. And then we can also click on the floor. And then when you will say you will see that we have this really cool um like material for the ground. So I'm gonna go ahead and click it. So I will find it, and then I can click back into the uh, cube and I can just press this arrow so it will basically assign it on the cube because i think it looks pretty cool so now what we're going to do is just put it a bit up so basically is this is where the player will start 
The thing is that right now it will just start where the camera is located because we don't have a player start. So what we want to do is go into um, up here into the add uh, tool. And then what we want to do is just start typing while we're hovering over this place. And you say player start. And you will see that we have here player start. And then it will be added on here. So we're gonna reset the position and then just put it up. And then there's a really handy tool, which is the end. And then it will just snap it into the floor. And then if you see on here, if you press this, you will see that we have a uh, where the spawn but the player will basically spawn and we can just select the default spawn that we have just selected. So now the player will always start here, uh, looking also in that way. So you can see the arrow will look out. There's a lot of gizmos here um, because of the volumetric fog, etc. And they're just there to, to just check things. But really what we want is the player start and you can see that the arrow is pointing that way. So it will basically look in that way. Now press Ctrl Shift S to save your part and we'll go, go ahead and create a new folder. So just right click new folder call it levels just in case in the future you add multiple levels and the name of this level was will just be um uh, our map <laughs> just to have the something basically okay so now we can basically start placing th some things so i'm gonna ctrl d so i duplicate this and i want to basically put some yeah another platform on there so now let's make it so that we'll create some moving platforms so we can jump on it and then reach the other part. So in order to basically do this, what we're going to do is go into blueprints, right click, new blueprint class, and it's going to be type actor. So this is going to be our BP platform. Let's go ahead and open this up. And then what we want to do is basically add a cube. Now we're going to go ahead and stretch it a bit. So we, we go a bit more, uh, even a bit more. Maybe we're going to change the size over here. So 0.10, something like that. Yeah, there we go. It's quite thin and there we go. So the thing is that now if I compile and press play and just drag this into the scene over here, first of all, it's pretty small. So we want to make it by default a bit bigger. So we just want to make it, let's see, let's see, let's see like this, well, actually kind of like this and like this. So it will be like 4.55, basically five. So we can just go back here and just say, well, it will be five and five in the X and Y, but in the set, it will be like that again. We can compile and then we can just reset the values here. So now it will be kind of this size. Now I'll go ahead and press end. So we'll just snap over here and now I can just spread it a bit forward. So basically I'm going to say that it will um, start on this location around here and it will move into here and then back into here. So to do this, we can go back into our blueprint and it's a very useful component we can add. So you just press add. And if we go down, you can see that there's a whole list of different components that we can add, etc. Now, the one that we want is interp to movement. So you just go ahead and select this. And now we will have different things. The first thing is that the duration. So how much time it will take to reach its uh, the next location that you want to have different control points. And then there's more values that we're not going to really touch except the behavior type. So the control points is basically um, where the platform will move to. Now we want to add two. So the first one will just be 0, 0, 0 in the relative position. So if you click relative position will be just by default. It will be basically on kind of not the world position, but locally into this space. So basically the 0, 0, 0 will be always the starting point of this blueprint. If it was 0, 0, 0 on the world, so they say on this, it will be on here, basically, if it makes sense. So we want it to be relative to be the 0, 0, 0 where the blueprint is located, not of the world. And then the next point is going to be a bit like forward. So the x axis is going to be forward and we will need to calculate how much we need to move. So we can just press a number here. So for example, 200. And then we can compile. So now you will see if I press play, the platform will move a bit forward. Now it was not a lot. We need to move it until here. And then it just did it once. It just went and stopped. So I'm just also going to close the bullet and the third person. And we are not using it anymore. But we want to go back into platform and we want to make the duration uh, a bit longer because maybe it was too quick for the track. Uh, you know for for the distance that it is so maybe two seconds 
and then this we're gonna put like a 700 and then we want to change the behavior type to be a ping pong because we want it to basically be like a loop it will go back and forth so now you can see that it goes up to there and then it stops so if you press f8 you will see that we can actually go in play and change the camera perspective so we can just uh, go ahead and move this uh, guy over here so we can just select it to be movable selected move it and then calculate where the thing will stop so around here maybe um you yeah, know you can just change it how you like so like there so now what we can do is just copy the x-axis get the play mode off and then we can just paste the x-axis back and there we go now we have a moving platform which will go back and forth and you can jump into it we'll go here and then we can jump back into here really cool so now you can basically start designing your levels as you want so basically now we can make it so it will turn right so i can just basically get the platform duplicate it move it to here then rotate it so it will be looking this way 90 degrees then back over here and then in here we can just go and paste it here now there's a better way of calculating the distance over here so we're going to just go back into here and we can create a new variable which will be the destination now this will be a type vector because it contains x y and z positions and then what we can do is say show 3d widget and it will be um expose and spawn and then instance edit pool and then show 3d widget there we go so now basically it will appear uh in the scene now i don't know why it's not appearing let me use a second so i think that we also want to yeah there we go the destination is here so we can change this a bit and you will see how it should yeah there we go we have to select the object you will see this gizmo so we can basically go ahead and select it and move it around so basically we will want to make it end around here so now in the platform the thing is that we have to say that the inter uh, interpret to movement will be basically the end point over here so instead of doing this we're gonna go ahead and delete of the control points we're gonna go into the construction graph now there's a difference between the event graph and construction graph the graph the event graph will basically um is where you will basically code all the functionality in runtime so when the game starts while the game is going in the event tick when an actor collides with something etc the construction graph will also be reproduced on the editor so while you are basically doing things okay so in here we want to do is just get the enter to movement component and you say add control point position so now we can just plug it in over here and the position will be basically zero 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 the first one and then we want to add a new one so just copy and paste this but the new one will be basically the destination sorry destination we can get it and then plug it in over here compile and now and we select this one and we can you say it will go into here so now if we press play you'll see that the platforms will go into where we place the 3d position so it's really cool now we can change dynamically um how uh you know where the the end point will be another thing i want to do is select this and increase a bit the duration because it was basically going very fast we can now ctrl shift s to save everything so we can now continue basically making our map as you will basically like to. Now, a thing to have in mind is that maybe you want to place it a bit earlier. So the center of the pivot is a bit, there we go. So it doesn't like tra trespass through the other object. And maybe you want to make a little jump, but yeah. So you can experiment as you want to continue doing this map. Now let's go ahead and just start adding some enemies that will try to basically go ahead and um attack you etc and then you can shoot them with your uh you know with your uh, shotgun so what to do is go into blueprints right click go into blueprint class and want to create a new type of character so it's going to be our bp underscore enemy let's go ahead and open this up so because we have selected a character blueprint class it will already have a mesh a capsule collider etc and a character mode component so we're just in the mesh for now we're just gonna add in here the many for example actually many simple and then here we've got a minus 89 and a uh, minus 90 degrees 
so it will be facing forward and in the right position and in the anim class for now it will just be the abp money the default one so now we basically can just drag this enemy on here facing us for example and there we go it would just be standing there of course it would not do anything <laughs> it would just stand there so we want to basically add some functionality into this guy so we can go into the freaking graph now i do have a more advanced uh, tutorial on a simple enemy ai so if you want to check it out i'll be linking it in the description so what we want to do is make a new custom event that we can call at any time it will be basically a chase chase player there we go so now what we want to do is call this function which is ai move to the second one now the pawn will be self sorry self because it's basically the pawn that we're going to move which is basically this enemy and we can just plug the target actor to be the get character um player character there you go now the set test radius is uh, which distance it will stop when it reaches the, its destination. Uh, so we're going to increase this into like 120 because normally it gets like too close. And then on success, what we're going to do is basically make a loop. So it will just call again chase player. So it will be just a loop. When it finishes, it will go ahead and call again chase player. Da -da -da. And then in the big gameplay, we have to basically call it once. So we will actually start the loop. And there we go. Now the thing is that if we press play, you will see that nothing will happen yet. Now the reason is that Unreal Engine has to calculate all the paths that the AI can basically go. So for this, what we want to use, go up here, go to volumes and add a Nash, nav mesh bounce volume. So this will just be a simple area, which will just calculate all the possible paths that the AI can go. So we're going to go here and reset the value to be on here. And then we can change the scale, we can just lock it and then say, for example, 50. It will make it absolutely huge. And then if I press P, you will see that it will preview all the possible areas that the AI can basically go, which just looks very cool. So now if we control shift S and then press play, you will see that the player will go and then it will try to actually step on the platform and basically reach us as you can see. Now it's a bit buggy because it's a bit hard for the AI to go. Now there's a lot of things missing on the AI, but now, okay, you're actually standing on there. That's pretty cool. Um, come on okay i think it's a bit bugged um yeah but we'll try to resolve it a bit later actually we can just maybe move it the destination to be a bit more inland so maybe maybe there's time for him to basically enter the platform yep okay well yeah it's a bit buggy anyway there's a few things that you have noticed first of all there's no walking animations and stuff and then there's a very snappy movement not looking very natural so we want to go into the enemy and we want to go into class defaults and we're going to search for jaw jaw and then disable use control rotation jaw which would just set the rotation to be very snappy and that's what we don't want so we want to go is in the character movement component go down and say use control desired rotation so it would just move uh, smoothly rotate the controller as you can see now it rotates a bit smoother and then we want to now uh, apply some animations so what we want to do is go and save there we go and go into the mesh and here we want to do is create a new um uh, anim blueprint so what we want to do is go into content right click new folder enemy uh animations let's go animations open this up and we're gonna go ahead and right click i'm gonna go ahead and create a new animation blend space 1d once again select the uh skeleton enemy open this up now we'll contain the shotgun because we let the socket enabled but don't worry in the game it will not be uh, show me the shotgun so now in here we can say speed now in here it will be 600 because the maximum speed for the enemy is basically 600 you can see there now you can change that as you want and then we can just search for the idle animation which in here it will not contain any rifle so we can just plug the normal uh, idle animation and then we can say the run was it yeah run forward there we go into the end once again it will smoothly blend depending on the speed and now we can just right click animation blueprint skeleton create abp 
underscore enemy. Open this up. We just get our enemy. enemy. Blend space. Again, we're gonna use the default slot later on so we can, for example, make enemy attacks, animations, and stuff. Then right click and promote to variable. So we will basically do the same on the van graph. So to make things easier, we're going to just go into the shotgun animations, open the um, blueprint, and we just go ahead and copy this, and then delete this, and then paste this, and that's it. Now what we want to do is cast this time into the enemy blueprint instead of the character blueprint. So delete this, go, and then right click, promote variable, it's gonna be our the enemy. We go and then here we want to do is just say it's gonna be the enemy. Compile save, close it, close it, go to the enemy, into the mesh, and then we're gonna assign the um, enemy blueprint. So now it will be moving with this animation as you can see, which looks really cool. So now the thing I want to do is make it a bit yeah like that. Yeah like that. I'm just gonna try a bit so that it can hop into the, um, yeah, it has to be up into the platforms, but I, th I think it will be a bit tricky. Uh, I did, really didn't have a plan, so it will go into the platforms, but I see that it kind of manages to do it. But what that was basically doing is that when you reach a new destination, it will basically, um, you know, uh, the enemy will try to attack you. You know what I mean? Because the, the areas you have reached, so. Let me just. Okay, yeah. So we want to do just, just make so that the enemy will not be able to climb into things. But when I, I go here, he basically will try to get me. Hopefully. So the thing is that you know that sometimes it's bugging the enemy, uh, and it's a bit because of the platforms. So what I'm going to do is just make it so that we have to make a final jump. So basically, it will end pretty like close to here we go so i can just jump we go we can just jump and the thing is that it's not really refreshing the enemies and tight even though we are in a loop now if we press play you will see that we can preview it's the enemy behavior you can see how i go here and then i find here and it really doesn't do anything so a thing that we want to do is make it so that it will only trigger when we are close to the player. Um, now, there's many reasons might, why it might, you know, this might be happening. I think it's because of the platforms moving, it's refreshing the navigation mesh. But we can just fix it by going and adding a new collision. It will be a sphere collision. There we go. We can just make the radius a bit bigger. So if the player enters this radius, it will basically attack the player. So now we can go into component begin overlap. It will basically cast from the other actor into the third person character. Sorry, cast to third character. So if the cast is success, it will mean that we have collided, well, the uh, player has entered in this radius. So we will call chase player from here instead of from the beginning play you know what i mean so now if i press play basically the enemy will not move but if i go here and then i manage to jump back here and i enter you will see that the enemy will start basically following the map now the thing as you can see that it stops very fast and we might want to make some smooth turns now sorry we have added the smooth turns but the stopping is very harsh so we can go into, sorry, the shotgun, no. But we can go into the uh, enemy animations, into the band space. I want to find the weight and want to increase this like 50. And then in here, we can close it. And in smoothing time, we can add a 0.01. And then you can see that now, if I press play, I'm gonna make this a bit bigger so you can see. So yeah, we can actually press play like uh, from another window. So that's really handy. So now we can just jump over here. There we go. We can just find their enemy. And now it's a bit smoother. There we go. So yeah, uh, it's really cool. So we should make that it can, you know, we can basically attack our, <laughs> our enemy. 
and to do this what i'm going to do is go into the bullet character sorry blueprints bullet and what i want to do is destroy the actor after but first of all we're gonna go ahead and cast sorry we don't need even to cast we can just apply damage so it will basically apply damage to whatever actor it has hit and then immediately after it will just destroy the bullet so we're gonna place for example 10 of damage and we don't need anything more we can just go ahead and close it now the thing is that it will not do anything yet because well we have not set a health system into the enemy so we're gonna make a very easy one so go ahead and open the enemy and we go go ahead and call the event any damage so basically we will, when we receive any damage we'll call this event so what we're going to do is create a new variable it's going to be the health and then it's going to be a float and then we're going to set it and then health will be minus the damage that we have received and then we'll go ahead and set it now we're going to do also make a branch and the thing is that we're going to check if the health is smaller or equal than zero if it is we want our character to die so what we want to do is just go to mesh set simulate physics so what this will do what this will do is just activate a ragdoll so the character will just kind of fall really cool so now i think that we have to do is go into the mesh go down into collision presets and i'm gonna say physics actor if not the collisions will not work properly Okay, so now this should work. So if we hit play, we should be able to shoot actually play from here. And there we go. We have actually killed <laughs> our um, character and you can see this there in the ground. Really cool. Now, the thing is that we have our health to zero. So let's select it for like for 50. So now it will be a bit harder to hit the, well, to finish off killing the enemy. There we go. <laughs> so it's looking pretty cool right now. We can go ahead, shoot our enemy. It will, when we get here, it will chase us, etc. Now, we're going to add some particles because it looks very boring. So, we're going to go ahead and add a new folder. It's going to be Niagara Systems or Niagara System. I never know how to properly spell it. But anyway, right click, Niagara System. Next, I'm going to go ahead and create a Omnidirection Boost. Just add it and finish it. It's going to be an NS. So NS. And then it's going to be a um damage yeah so this will be uh this will just be a particle effect using the new niagara system so what we want to do is basically spawn this whenever we hit an enemy in its location but of course we want to turn it blood uh, red and like if it was blood and stuff now we'll do it in a second so what we want to do is go here into the, the bullet once again and when we hit um now th the thing is that if we do it here even though we have a uh, we haven't hit the enemy and we have hit another thing it will also spawn the um the particles we just want to spawn them if we have hit it an enemy so we're gonna go ahead and do it actually in the enemy so right before we do the check we're just gonna call this spawn system at location we can just select here our um bullet i think it was no what was it? damage 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 oh my goodness damage there we go and then the location will be well get actor location and we just get the current location the rotation scale i don't mind and then the point i'm gonna say auto release so now if i hit the player will see this uh there's particles spawning that's really cool now we need to turn them red so we're going to do this by going to the sprite render and then in the material we can just search for red now there will be some red materials but the thing is that it will look very bad because they're not masked so we'll have like squares <laughs> and it's not really what we want so what we want to do is instead of actually uh, spawning to the images basically sprites because sprites are just to the images always facing the camera we are going to actually spawn 3d objects now you're gonna say oh that's gonna impact a lot of the performance well the thing is that niagara is really well optimized for that kind of jobs so we can just delete the sprite render and then add a mesh renderer and when i select it it's gonna be open mesh it's gonna be a sphere whatever sphere is okay you will see that now we have a lot of spheres 
so now we can go into enable material override add the new one go open up and then we can search for blood sorry red we can also create our own material but it's easier if we use you know use like for example this one and even in red it's okay you see that now we have red particles but they're very big so what we want to do is go into initialize particle and then in sprite we can just say into unset because we're not using it anymore we're using these mesh so it's going to be a, a random uniform so we're going to go from 0.2 to 0.3 now there's two to pick so 0 0.02 0 0.05 let's see yeah so these ones are a bit better they're like smaller and yeah I, I like them more so now if i yeah let me see you can see the particles effects appearing so they look really cool now we're gonna make them that they're, they're gonna be like faster so in the initialize I'm gonna say the left hand is gonna be from 0.5 to 0.7 and now it's like yeah they will not be as much on the on the ground even I'm gonna make like 0.3 and 0.5 basically it's gonna be like much faster so now if I press play and I hit the enemy yeah it, now it's a bit faster it's like more blood and less like you know uh, I don't know fireworks <laughs> basically so now let's make that when our AI uh, gets very near to us it will just attack us very very quickly so to do this what we're going to do is go into the BP enemy create a new um, uh, collision and it's gonna be a new sphere collision it's gonna be the attack radius so this is going to be pretty much us our detection radius that I'm actually going to rename it into the detection radius. But it's going to be a bit different because first of all, it's going to be way smaller and then we will only call it in a specific times. So in the begin overlap, we're going to do is make sure that we can attack. So we go a new variable which is going to be is in radius this will basically mean if we can attack so it's going to be boolean and on here so we're going to set it i'm going to say yes it's in radius so now what we want to do is basically um create a custom event it's going to be attack player so we can call this any time that we want so the attack player we're going to do is just cast to the third person character so we'll basically access our player basically where the object is going to be the get player um, character and then we want to do is just say uh, apply damage so we will just be applying damage into our uh, player now best damage is going to be like 10 again and then what we want to do is just call this uh, attack player only if we are on radius so if we're on radius we'll go ahead and continue if not not and then on the so this is the begin overlap but in, so in the tech radius in the uh, end overlap we'll set it to be copy and paste so it will be disabled so now we will no longer be able to attack so this will be basically attack a player so just select everything I press C and then you can comment now in the begin play we're gonna add a begin play we're gonna make a retrievable delay so it's gonna be each one second so each one second it will be attacking the player but the thing is that it will only attack if we are in radius so actually if we are far away it will not do anything basically now we're gonna go ahead and uh, copy the same um, uh, health system into our player so we can go into content, third person, blueprint, third person character. We can just paste it over here, press C, health system. Let me just change the H into capital. Let's go. And then we can just right click, create variable health. Let's go compile. And then I'm gonna get rid of the ragdoll. And then the hell is gonna be like I don't know 50 for now, so we can just check if this is working. So I press play. <laughs> okay, the the enemy attacked me for some reason. 
Oh, no, no, actually, it's okay. Anyway, so now if I get very close to it, he should, um, he should be able to, yeah, I don't know why he's not really making any damage. We don't have any errors. So anyway, this should be good. I should spawn. Um, so the problem seems like the enemy. So yeah, so every one second. Oh, because we only did it once. Sorry, so we need two actually. There we go. I need to do this. We need to basically, you know, make a repeat. It's up. So now if I press play. Yeah, so now it's basically always attacking me for some reason. <laughs> you can see that. Um, even though I am not in radius. Oh, because this isn't true. So it will be basically if radius is not boolean. So if we are not in the radius of the player. So now that was my mistake. Sorry. I press play. He's not attacking me. But as soon as I actually go ahead and reach him. We be closer, maybe. Yeah, there we go. He will be attacking me. So probably the player will just be going. Now, if you stay, it will actually not do anything for some reason. So we'll investigate that in a second. But as you try to go, it will be basically attacking. Now he doesn't have an uh, attack animation. So let's go ahead and quickly implement that attack animation. Now, the thing is that in an anime starter pack, there's really not any, you know, animation for uh, like attacking uh, without a weapon. There's not in like a melee. And if I am sure, melee, no, there's not really an attack animation. So what we will need to do is basically um, get another, yeah, another animation from outside. So I will be leaving this package with um, all free animations in the description, just in case you want to get it. And we're going to use this push shove attack. Just drag it into the content browser, where it's going to be with the old UE4 skeleton. We'll retard it in a second. And then, okay, import all that. There we go. So we have it. So we have it in UE4. This will be the attack animation. Just right click, retard, and then we're going to select the UE4 to UE5. Retard it. There we go. So now we can actually. Well, we're gonna, yeah, leave it there, it's okay. But now it's gonna be the enemy um, attack. Okay, so we're gonna actually drag it and I was gonna put it in enemy animations. Where is it? There we go. And there we go. So we want to play this animation whenever we want our enemy to attack. So to be able to play an animation from Blueprint in runtime, we want to right click, create an enemy montage. Now, the reason why I added a default slot uh, before is that if you see the animation montage will play in this slot. Now, you can create new slots and stuff, but I recommend always using the default slot if you are going to make simple stuff. So now, if we didn't have this in the animation blueprint, this default slot, it will not be able to play this animation. It's as simple as that. So we want to save it closer, go into the enemy and right on here. We want to, after all this, we want to um, play montage, play and name montage. And there we go. We can just go ahead, expand this. We want to select our enemy attack. And as simple as that, if we now press play, actually, uh, I'm just going to go here, right click, and you can just say, um, what is it? Play from here. And it's going to be a bit simpler. So now um, he should be able to, there we go, attack, as you can see. Now we're gonna go ahead and fix the thing that hits an attack while on there. So if I go here, you will see that every time I'm calling, but it's saying that it's not in radius. So I'm beginning overlap and overlap. The thing is that we are not checking if what we are entering is a player or not. So what we want to do is just cast into the player. Yeah, so basically we weren't checking if what was entering was the player or not. We want to go into our actor and we'll do the same on here. So right now, if it was colliding with any object at all, it was going to also affect this. But we want to do it if it's only the player. So now, we play from here. He should. Okay, he's not really doing that. If it's... Oh, sorry. If it's... If he is in radius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was working good before. 
So yeah, I, I delete that knot. So now, so now he is not attacking me. But when I get close to him, now he's attacking. Okay, sorry guys, my mistake. I don't know what happened there, but it go. Now another thing you happen is that when the camera gets too close to the enemy, it will start doing weird things. So the thing is that the camera is detecting the enemy as an obstacle. So we don't want that because it will just create a lot of distraction, pulling the camera forward and backwards. So we're gonna select the mesh, go down, put it into custom, and then in camera, set it into ignore. And the same with the capsule component, uh, custom, ignore. So now it will not do that weird thing. Another thing I'm going to do is make that um, the animation will play right before we start actually adding the damage and stuff um, because we wanted to have a little of the delay. So we want to basically first play the animation and then um, send the health because okay, so now it will look too weird. So we want to actually open the montage. We want to actually attack right on here, so, like on here. So in a point twenty-five. So there we go. So yeah. So point twenty-five. If I delay, we want to basically send the damage on that point. So we look a bit more realistic. Actually, I'm gonna get close. Play from here. So now I enter. There we go. He starts attacking me. As you can see. And it looks a bit better okay so actually you will see that he cannot kill me because we haven't got anything on uh, sorry on the player on here when, when it's true we don't do anything so I'm just gonna say destroy actor and then I'm gonna have a delay delay there we go of two seconds and then I'm gonna go ahead and open a level by name so by reference now by name open level by name and it's gonna be exactly this name so our map like this with the O capital so it would just reload the level and restart the game basically if, if we die we'll just restart so now if I okay I'm just gonna press play from here so it's a bit better there you go so he's attacking me now we'll make a health bar in a second so we can see the damage and there we go we can now have a player and now it will restart the player in two seconds hopefully oh of course we cannot make a delay um, because the actor the player has been destroyed so no longer he can reproduce more things so in conclusion we have to go into the level blueprint so we want to open the blueprint of the level and we'll go ahead and create a new custom on which will be respawn. Basically, this will just make it a small delay of two seconds. And then I'm gonna control X and move this into here. So the level will be the responsible of making a delay and opening again the map, not the player itself. The player itself will just destroy this, but we basically want to um, you know, reference and uncall this function over here. Now the thing is that we cannot uh, reference our map directly from our blueprint, which is pretty, you know, not really a good thing because it limits us in a lot of things. But that's why we have the game mode. So we can go into world settings, and then we can say game mode. It's going to be third person game mode, and then we can open this up. And now we can open the full editor and we can just copy this ctrl x and paste it and now we can do it in the game mode instead of the level and apart from it being in the game mode so if we change of level it will still have the same functionality um we can now actually reference the the the, the, the game mode so now we can say um, cast to uh, third person game mode and then the object is gonna be get game mode. And that's it. It should work. So now if I press play, sorry, if I go here, press play from here, so it's a bit faster. It starts killing me. Here we go. We're gonna add a hit animation for in a second. It will destroy and now in two seconds. It should. <laughs> what just happened? It should. Um 
do that. So let me just say a small delay of two seconds. Yeah, we're oh because we're sorry we are casting but we are not calling the uh, so we need to call the respawn player. Sorry, mistake. We need to call respawn from here. Sorry, from here. We need to call this event. Of course, we didn't call it. So now we just can delete this. Plug this here. Press play. We'll go back to our map. Play from here. It will attack us. And then we can go ahead and die. And then two seconds. And there we go. Now the map restarts. Pretty cool. So the next thing I want to do is just go here and then find and hit animation. So we can see that we have a bunch of hit reacts animation. So to make it more dynamic, we're going to play a random of this four each time. So just go ahead, select everything, right click, retard, as you know, we need to go from U4 to E5. We have all this, we can just drag it into uh, shotgun animations. And then I'm going to create folder, so hit uh, underscore and names. So now we can basically get off the hit reactions animations and then move them here. And there we go. Right click, create a name montage. As you know, if we want to play an animation directly from the code very easily, we can do do it so with an um, hit animation. So now we can just go into the third person character blueprint and we can create a new variable which is gonna be hit anims. So this will be an animation montage. It's gonna be an object reference and then compile and then there we go we can just get the hit right one and then this will be an actually an array because we want to have multiple ones so now we can just add one two three four so zero one two three so then we can just play this hit react one hit react two hit react three hit react four sorry four so in conclusion a array is just a collection of it's basically like a list of those um and the montages instead of just being one so we can use it like that. So now in here, when we take damage right before we check if we are dead or not, we can just get this array and then get random. Sorry, get the copy. And then we just say we want to get. So in here, we can basically get a specific index of this um, array. So we can get either zero, one, two or three. And we want to get a random one. So we can say it's get random. Sorry, random, random integer in range. So the maximum will be basically three and the minimum will be zero. Now, in order to make this a bit better, if and if, if in the future we want to add more animations, we can just get it and then get length. So length. So we can get automatically uh, how long is the list and it will just look a bit better. And then what we'll you say here, play montage and then montage and then just plug this in here. Here we go. So now each time that we get hit, it will play a random and then montage. So now we'll go here. So there and there you go. We hate uh, we play a hit animation like so. Really cool. So let's make quickly a health uh, bar so we can see our damage. And then we will also make one for the enemy. So we're gonna create a new folder called UI. Open this up. Right click user interface widget blueprint user widget. It's gonna be a WB um, health bar. Let's go ahead and open this up. So in here we can basically add a lot of things for UI. In our case, we're gonna search for a canvas and add it. So now we can basically start placing things. And what we're going to do is add a progress bar. Now I will make this so it will be in the corner here and then we can make it as big as you want rip it down here we go now you can change the color it will be basically red it makes sense and we can just preview the percent for example 7 you can see how it will be with 70 percent of the health so we need to place the anchors into the corners in here so this is just if the screen rescales the ui will know where to place this it's basically pretty necessary okay so now we can go ahead and bind this percentage with the amount of health that the player has. Just press bind, create binding. And then what we want to do is basically cast to the third person character. Again, we need to access the player. 
and then it's going to be get player character and then what to do is get the health variable and then the thing is that we have to divide it by the max amount of health because um, this health bar goes from 0 to 1 and we are calculating our damage in the health system from 0 to 100 so if we divide this by 50 so yeah which is our maximum health go back here we will basically get a, a nice number there we go so now what is left to do is go into third person character blueprint up here in the begin play so after we make our input go ahead and create an widget so this is gonna be our um, health bar will you be health bar the only place is gonna be a get player controller and then we just want to add it into the viewport and that's it if I now press play you will see that health bar is uh, basically totally completed and filled up but if I go into this platform and then go into the enemy and he starts attacking me you see how the health bar actually decreases and when it reaches zero I will die pretty cool so let's quickly make one for the uh, for the enemy so just go ahead and duplicate this it's gonna be the enemy health bar let's go ahead and open this now this will be basically in the center um, around here and then we'll place our anchors again the thing is that this is gonna be displayed 3d on top of the enemy's uh, head so we want to always center uh, the things in the middle so it will be easier to then place it in the head and stuff we want to go again into the binding which is in the graph uh, we said we go get percent but instead of getting the the one from the the player it will be getting the get all actors of class we'll basically find our enemy in the scene okay so this will basically return you can get a copy sorry get a get a copy so we'll basically get the first enemy that we find in the scene and then we'll cast into it the bp enemy and then again we'll just get to the health and then divide it by the maximum health that the enemy has which i think is also 50. and that's it we can close it close this close the player so now in the enemy we just want to go into the capsule component and add a witch normal witch it's gonna be a health widget so then we want to basically in here assign the widget class which will be the enemy health bar pull it up and there we go that's all we need to do now the thing is that it will not be always facing the player right so if we go into here well i can preview this if the f at if i go down like into well sorry into its rotation you can see they all not be facing the camera so we want to be to, to be facing the camera so to this we're going to the bank graph and go down into the event tick and we want to get the health widget and then set the weld rotation so what we want to do is get uh well find the look at rotation between the health widget and the player so we just get the location the world location of the health widget and then the target will be basically the uh where is it oh yeah we want to just get the get player get player character and then we just say get actor actor location there we go here it is and i'm gonna just plug it in into target compile and save and now it will be always looking at the player so now if i go a bit here play from here you will see that now if i turn it will be always facing me and then if i actually there we go the e health bar worked for the enemy and you can see that it's still uh, moved and attacked even though the enemy was dead so the thing that we can do is when it's dead apart from simulating physics and stuff get the character component can move uh can walk what was it oh we can basically just stop movement immediately okay and then another thing that we can do is just create an is dead variable which will be a boolean so in here we'll basically set it to true 
and then in the taste player we just make that the uh, AI can move only if is dead is a not boolean so if it's, this is not true basically and there we go so that's cool and uh, we'll also make it that it will only attack also if uh, branch if uh, he's not dead too so this go down here this we go great so now you can start just decoding your environment a bit more and making it a bit more cooler i guess you could say by adding more platforms etc to play with you know more enemies let's get the enemy located put it here another enemy basically here uh yeah i get this one to be a bit over here you know you can basically start designing your levels as you would basically want to get another one here we go rotate it degrees one in here it's gonna be a very short one there we go and in this one you can have like a chest maybe and then we want to change a bit the this to fill out the floor now you can change the material of the of the uh, floor for example we can make it so it will be a pool so it will be basically water so if i pull this you can see how cool it looks it's basically like water of course it doesn't have underwater effects but you can see that we are like going here and floating and we can also change the scale so it's much bigger so it'll be more filled up so for example let's say it will be a hundred um because yeah it's like an ocean you can see how cool this looks and then uh things that you can change the this for example to be like little ships or whatever you want for example just let's search it for wood that's oak wood or whatever <laughs> and then you can select a lot of ones search for wood of course you should have um like actual bolts not like cubes but you get the point you can also go into the uh into the platforms now the cool thing is that because platforms are boop are a blueprint i just call ctrl e and it will open the blueprint and then we can change the material on one of this so for example i don't know what material we could say let's find a cool material so it is important that you opened with the started content if not you can just go into uh, add uh in a feature and then i think you can go into content so, yeah content sorry content if not but when you create the template it's easier basically and i can go into materials and find the cool material so for example let's say to use i don't know um gold <laughs> right we can go here we can just assign it so now we'll have gold and that will basically change on all of the platforms at once so it's really handy so yeah now you have pretty much a cool game you can just go ahead of course it's very bare bones and go ahead and shoot the enemies before they shoot you you can go ahead here i mean it's very basic but you get the point it goes here you can start here you go and you can go here now you will see that the health bars of the other enemies are actually um empty i will explain why in a second and there we go so you see how it's going now the thing is that the the water has a collision so i can stand by and walk so let's make it so that if i touch the water it will kill the the player so to do this what i can do is just uh, convert this into blueprint by going here and then uh subclass floor blueprint yes okay so this will basically convert it, this into blueprint so now i can go into event graph say uh, event hit and then if this is the the third person character blueprint what i'm going to do is just apply damage and i will just apply like 500 damage so it will just instantly kill it so now if i go to the ground i die <laughs> and then it respawns the level so that's really cool um we can start experimenting more things now about the health bars not appearing on the other enemies it's because if you remember if i go into ui enemy health bar 
you will see that in here we're just getting the first enemy that it finds on the scene. So we need to basically get its own actor. So in conclusion, we don't need to do the um, binding on the uh, health bar, but we want to do it in the enemy. So in event tick, we want to go ahead and get the health widget again. And then we want to do is basically um, delete all of this, basically delete the binding. So select here, uh, remove binding. I want to uh, take this as is variable, okay? So now what we want to do is go into enemy and get the um, health, no, slider, uh, progress bar, sorry. No, how is it called? Yeah, progress bar and health. Okay, so we want to basically, oh, I, <laughs> I close the enemy. Let me open it again, control E to open blueprint. Um, get health. No. Okay, I don't know why it's, it doesn't find it, even though we have it, it's variable. Oh, because it didn't compile what? Okay, uh, so yeah, what we want to do is go into the event graph, go into the main event graph, and on event tick, what uh, we want to do is go, yeah, we want to create a new variable, which will be the health current health it's gonna be uh, float now it's gonna be exposed so this is gonna be the one that we can change hopefully it's on here um, get current health no I, why I can't um, oh get which I need to cast okay cast to um, enemy which okay so yeah we have to also cast I forgot about that so now actually we can get directly the health so basically the, the progress bar. And we can just set the percent to be, well, our health divided by 50, which is our max health. And there we go. It will do basically the same thing as it was gonna do in the binding, but directly from the blueprint. So now I can delete the current health. There we go, because we're not gonna use it. And close this. And now you will see that all the enemies who can I reach him? Yeah, we'll have a different uh, set amount of come on, come on, of uh, yeah, damage. So another thing that we need to do is that, for example, if you shoot, uh, you should always uh, be able to shoot whatever you're looking because it's, it will be hard uh, because the character only turns whenever I'm moving. But now when I'm standing by, so if I shoot, I will not be, for example, shooting that enemy properly. So what we want to do is open the third person character blueprint. And we want to basically enable, uh, sorry, no, we want to enable uh, jaw uh, rotation whenever we shoot for one second. So we're going to go into the shoot system. And right after that, I'm going to set jaw is going to your to be true but then we're gonna delay until the next tick so until the next frame and then we'll just go ahead and set it back to false basically so this will basically just allow us to um shoot and uh, whatever if we are not looking to that direction too so now we have a pretty cool game as you can see of course you can expand it later on so let's make it that when you reach the end you will basically win okay <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and add here a trigger so you search for trigger trigger volume there we go so when you reach this part over here okay um, you will basically just win the game okay so what we're going to do is go into the level blueprint so select the trigger volume right click and then we'll basically create a reference but we want to add an event in collision when the actors uh the actor begin overlap so the other actor if it's if it's the third person character we want to do it's now launch the uh com the game completed so what we want to do is basically create a new ui which will be basically a user interface that we should be uh, finished game. I don't know, whatever. 
So let's go ahead and open this up and we're gonna go ahead and add a canvas so we can start placing things on our canvas panel. And then uh, what I want to do is add an image. Now the the anchors will be on the whole screen and it's gonna be zero, zero, and then offset zero, zero. So this is gonna be black and then it's gonna be uh, okay, so basically what we're going to do is just a nice transition, so we'll just fade into black, okay? So we want to create a new animation, so, so this will be basically the uh, fade uh, image. So selecting this, gonna create a new animation, can be just fade, and then select it, and then what to do is just a new track. So the thing that we want to do is just say here, and then we can start making uh, keyframes. The first keyframe is going to be with the alpha set to zero. And then at the end, like here, it will just have the alpha to 100. And then another keyframe. And then we'll see that it will create a nice, smoothly, smooth animation. There we go. And then we can just add the text over here in the middle of the screen saying uh, you won. Or something like that. Again, center it. And then we can make the font. A bit bigger basically there we go let's put the anchors on and then text you one and we can just also make another animation so text um sorry text appear drag it drag's gonna be the text and then we can just basically uh actually change the size of actually no we cannot keyframe that okay so what we want to do yeah change the color opacity so we're gonna change this into be this again and after a while it will be again full alpha you won there we go with nice animations so now what we want to do is go and um, leave this as default as basically well, actually, no, we can actually create it on this spot here. Yeah. So if I now were to create this widget too, so basically paste this and for example, put this into be a uh, finished game. You will see that when I press play, it will not play the animations. So first of all, control, uh, control X, I'm gonna go into the map and basically play this. Okay, so we'll create this when we reach the end. But what I want to do is go into the graph and on the event construct will be like the begin play. We have our animation, so the fade, get it, play animation. So it will basically play the animation. And then uh, with the copy and paste, with the text appear, <coughs> go ahead and do the same. So now we want to go into the signer and we'll go ahead and make it by default so we'll be basically invisible okay so by default they will be basically invisible but when you press the the animations they will actually appear so if i now were to start on here okay please don't kill me don't kill me uh jump here and then go to here there we go jewel one appeared and then we can just go to the map make a delay of like I don't know three seconds and then open level by name again our map and then oh basically sorry here we go uh, restart the level and that's it we'll go ahead and finish the level so now guys we'll be doing the very last thing we're gonna go, go ahead and I just basically created a sounds folder and just imported a footstep sound you can see so we're gonna be placing some footsteps on our character and then some background music and then some um like fire shoot uh, sounds okay so first of all the footstep what we're going to do is synchronize it with our animation so what we can do is just go into shotgun animations then go into the jog which is the only uh animation that we have like walking and then what we can do is just go here and see where the feet will basically touch the ground so in here it will be one point so we can go into notifies and add notify play sound selected in details when you say footstep so now we can just go ahead and 
control C then in here uh, control V and then on here again control V and that's it so now oh there's a last one here I think yeah there's one more here and that's it so now we have our footsteps set up so we're gonna make them like in 3d so what we can just go back into sounds right click sounds and sound attenuation I have a more detailed tutorial on this so if you want to check it out but basically this was all this would just allow us to have a 3d sound like um, depending on how far we are and stuff so we're gonna make it a natural sound and then what we can do to test this out is just go into the first step add it on here attenuation and then just drag uh, the first step sound and we can just preview the this uh, radius is open this and then so the maximum will be kind of like this area you know what I mean so it's gonna be the max area that the sound will reproduce and then uh, there we go so we can now go ahead and hear this I'm gonna turn it way up because I don't know if you can actually hear this but I'm gonna bring my ears maybe Okay, and now we're gonna add some music. So thankfully, uh, through the sorry content, I have some music, which I'm just gonna go ahead and drag in. So this started the music. Drag it into the scene, then double click and make sure that looping is enabled. If you're using your own music, you can do exactly the same thing and then make sure the looping is enabled. So now, press play. You'll see the, the sound playing. Now it's very loud, so we can just select the one in the scene and put like 0.25. Uh, for the volume and there we go and the next thing that we're going to do is the shooting sounds so we go into the third person character we're gonna go into the um, shoot system and right after this we're gonna say play sound at location and the location is gonna be get actor um, location there we go and then it's gonna expand this and the sound well I'm just gonna say, yeah, for example, click on button, it's gonna be good for me, okay? <laughs> because I don't have a shooting sound, so... Well, m maybe we have to change it. Uh, maybe it will be more like... I don't know. Mm, let's see what we can find. Yeah, this one. And simulate, I like it. Yeah, I like this. And then we're gonna make the last thing that is on the enemy. Selected, Control E. We're gonna go ahead and also when it receives damage, you say play sound. It is well, yeah, sh 3D. Yeah, it's okay. And then we can just say, I don't know. Let's see what we can find. No, uh, maybe this one. Maybe this one. I don't know. Yeah, th this one is okay. Okay. Okay, so that's it. We have a really cool game. Um, which we can go ahead and shoot. Go over here with the footsteps. I don't know if you really can hear them, but... Shoot the enemies. And then we have moving platforms where you can jump. Shoot more enemies. Jump over here. Go ahead, jump here. Then, of course, the enemies can attack you. It's very slow, but you can change like the damage settings, the speed. And then you can go ahead and finish the game. So, that's it, guys. I'm going to be ending the video uh, here. I hope this video was helpful. Um, if it was, I really appreciate it. Look at, you could you know, like the video and subscribe to my channel. I have lots of Unreal Engine 5 tutorials at this one. So, if you want to check it out, go ahead. And now, yes, with all I said, bye-bye.